Well, we're finally getting to the point in the skiff build where it's time to go ahead and start working on the motor. So we're gonna go ahead and tear these carburetors apart. I wanna go through this motor, make sure it's gonna run good. It was idling a little bit rough, but it's a 96 motor and the carburetors have never been rebuilt. I just wanted to say I'm no expert and I haven't been into these carburetors. So this is mostly for mine and your learning experience. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but hopefully it'll go pretty easily and we can get these things back on. If you haven't seen the other videos of the skiff build, go ahead and check those out. Please subscribe and let's go ahead and get started. Well, we're over on the motor and first thing I got to do is get all this grease and gum off. So I sprayed it down with some industrial degreaser and let it set a few minutes. We're going to break out the pressure washer and get this thing washed off. Well, we got her all painted up. So now all I gotta do is let it sit and then I water sand it down and put on the clear coat. Well, I went ahead and cleaned out my workbench here. And well, it's not really a workbench. <laughs> this is my makeshift table. All of my workbenches are covered up with boat parts right now. So I've got all three carburetors off and I don't think it really, the only one that matters is this one as far as position. But I did go ahead and mark a middle top and bottom so we're gonna go ahead and start I'm just gonna pick one and start tearing into it I ordered off all my kits I actually got these off of Walmart that was the cheapest place I think they come from leaders rpm but I looked at them on Amazon Amazon had a bunch of different options but none of them had good enough reviews that really I wanted to risk getting broke down in the middle of the ocean or wherever so I went ahead and ordered OEM parts or I guess actually OMC. I want to get these things where hopefully I won't have to do this again for a long time. But I mean, I've never had to do it. This will be the first time I've had to tear these things down. And it ran a little rough at the end, but what we always did, one thing that always really helped was every time we put the boat on the trailer, we'd pull the fuel line off and let the carburetors completely run out of fuel. And I've never, this boat has never seen ethanol for gas. It's always had ethanol gas, and it's been that way since, I guess, I don't know when they came out with ethanol gas, but I mean, since 96, that's what we've always done, and this is the first time. The last couple times, it still ran great, but it didn't want to start well. So we're gonna go ahead and tear these things apart, get started. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little brass brush and a carb cleaner, and I'm just gonna clean all the gunk off the outside of this thing before I do anything. All right, I got it all cleaned up. And these things have been sitting for about two or three hours since I pulled them off. And they're already, all the gas is pretty much drained out of them. I just chunked them in a box. But if you were just pulled them off, first thing you'd want to do would be take this plug out of the back. And this will drain your bowl and get all the gas out. But I don't think there should be, yeah, that one's pretty well dry. So I'm gonna set that bolt to the side and Phillips head, and I'm gonna take the bowl cover off. All right. And there we go. So this one, they've all been really clean inside. Whenever I'm starting on a carburetor that I don't know a whole lot about that I've never been into before, First thing I like to do is open up the kit and just kind of get a reference as to what all parts you have. And that normally gives you a pretty good idea of what you've got to do, what you've got to look for whenever you're tearing it apart. And now all I'm doing is I'll take a little punch 
or something, you can take the old or the new pin that comes with it and just take that little pin out and your float will come right out and then you'll have your uh, stop right there, your float needle. And now you can take a straight bit and right here is your float needle seat that comes with a new one. This kit does. Take that out, take that gasket off. And now all we gotta do is get this clean good and cleaned up. And I'll squirt it with some carburetor cleaner. Take a little brass brush, and brush around in there real good. All right, we got that good and cleaned out. And now I'm gonna clean out the bowl. Take the gasket off, throw that away, and same deal. One thing I am doing is I'm making sure I scrub where the gasket seats really well. All right, got that all cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and set it over here to the side where it's good and clean. And now, back to my Phillips. We're gonna go ahead and take this top cover off. It's just four Phillips head screws. And this one can be a little tricky to get off. It doesn't like to come off at all. Take a little screwdriver. There we go. Now, same deal. I'm gonna squirt it down. And take my little brass brush. Now, make sure you use brass. Do not use steel, because the steel will scar the aluminum pretty bad. Brass is pretty soft metal, so it doesn't tear it up as bad. I made that mistake one time. All right. Now for this, take the gasket off. That's all I'm doing. And we'll squirt it down really good. All right, we got the plastic top cleaned up real good. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take the needle adjustment out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to count my turns in, all the way in until it's fully seated. So it's half, one, half, two, half, three, and a quarter. So now I'm going to take it all the way out. That way I know whenever I put it back in where I want it set up. There we go. And I'm not gonna take the uh, throttle flap out because it doesn't come, the kit doesn't come with anything for it. So there's not really any point to take it out. It doesn't come with the bushings or anything inside. And I'm just gonna leave it in. I'll squirt it out real good. Take brass brush, clean everything up really good. All right, so now on the top side of this, you see it's got these little holes. All I'm gonna do is take a little piece of copper wire, uh, welder tip cleaner the welding tip cleaner works really good and i couldn't find mine for whatever reason and this is what i used to always use before i got one of those so we're back to the tried and true and i'm just going to run that little piece of copper through there really good and all this is going to do is take out any little obstructions that there could possibly be and you've got one right here that goes all the way through and we'll do the same thing there and I'm going to also take a little bit bigger piece of wire. And this is where the wire comes in handy because the welding tip cleaners are only so long. And it wouldn't go all the way down. And I'm just going to run that through a couple times. That just breaks up any gunk in there. And same thing on the bottom. Break it in there. And right in there is a little tiny hole. I'm gonna use that little wire for Shove it up in there, get it good and clean. And now I'm just gonna squirt it out. And same thing for all these little holes. Just squirt those out real good. So I like to use a piece of cardboard and piece of plastic under that and paper towel. I make a mess, but 
it gets the job done. That's all that matters. So now where our jet came in, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little piece of wire right here. Not our jet, but our needle valve. Run that through there, get it good and cleaned out. And you want this, you want to see that stuff come squirting out. If it comes squirting out, you know that you got it. That's about it for the cleaning part. So now on the bottom side, you got a plug and I'm just going to take a little punch right through the top here, through this hole, and I'm just going to knock that out. And there we go. I wish I had a brass punch, but, and then that's all that thing is. And your kit comes with all this. And this is, again, a 96 Johnson 60 horsepower. And the part number is 396701. And I got these from Walmart. I think they were $22 a piece. And they come with a bunch of junk that you don't even need. Like all this stuff, you're going to use one, two, three, three things out of that. Well, that's all I've used. You may... Someone who tears these down a little bit more than I do you may find something else out here they can use but that's all I'm doing I'm not tearing it down any further and I don't think that there's actually any more parts in there the only other thing you could use are the stops for the spring but I'm not getting into all that so you will need this is your float needle and your float seat you will need those and it comes with a tiny little spring that I, there it is, a tiny little spring. Make sure you don't lose that. So now I'm gonna take the right side. It comes, I think they just make these kits for a bunch of different carburetors and they just sell them all for the same. So I'm gonna take the new plug, seat it down in here. And there comes with, I think three different sizes. So. Now, that was the only thing I could find that I had that would fit in there. Get it lined up. It's a little tap. And I think the way these things actually are supposed to work, I don't know. I think you're supposed to actually tap. It's concave. I think you're actually supposed to tap it just a touch to kind of flatten it a little. And then that seats it a little better. So I use the back side of a punch, good and round. These things are pretty soft, so it doesn't take much. And then I just take the punch and push, make sure it's seated well. And I don't, there's probably a tool or something to do that properly. I don't know, that's just the way I'm gonna do it. All right, so now what we gotta do is get our float in. And it comes, this kit comes with a new float, so we're gonna go ahead and get our needle spring on. And that just slides right on like so, like that. And this part goes up. So I don't know if it matters the orientation as to which way the spring slides on. They seem to go left or right on all of them. So that's the way I'm keeping it. And this is kind of tricky. So, oh, almost forgot. You gotta have the needle seat. It's a, it comes with a little plastic washer, put that on. And now, let's start that down in. Snug it up pretty good. There we go. Now we can put our float on. So I've got the needle just hanging there. And you want it back about halfway, a third of the way. And I'm just going to let it kind of fall down in. There we go. And now it comes with a new pin. I'm going to put the new pin in. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it up and down a little to get it all the way in. All right, well, I got the float 
Well, it's not quite. I'm gonna do just a little bit more, but it needs to be just level. Or I had it. I thought I had it pretty good, but I'm gonna finesse it just a little. And I've got my. This is what I found online for the measurements. If you're gonna measure it, measure it. But the drop is inch and. 1.125 to 1.65, so it's a pretty big gap, and that converts to inch and eighth and inch and five eighths pretty closely. So this is something that you know, it comes with really nice gaskets. They're not cheap though; they don't seem real cheap and kind of the black felt almost looking stuff. But these carburetors, from everything I've heard, are really bad about leaking. And whenever I put a float bowl on, I don't know if this is the way everyone does it or the right way. I use this aviation sealant. This stuff right here is amazing. If you don't have never used that, it works great. So I just put a little dab on a piece of plastic and I'm gonna take my finger and just put a really, really light coat around the outside edges just to get that extra little bit of seal. Cause these things, I know this thing has leaked for years. This stuff, if you work on tractors a lot and cars, it is a godsend. I used to always use that black RTV for everything. And I had a hard time getting my, uh, to put the top plate on my 8N for the hydraulics to seal. And I took it off twice, put it back on with the gasket and that RTV, black RTV. And then I, I don't remember where I saw this. I saw this somewhere and somebody used it. And I got some of this and tried it. And that thing, is, it ain't leaked since. So this stuff definitely works good. You're supposed to put it on, let it set for about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. I normally give it about five. But if you don't give it a long time, you need to let it set before you use it for at least overnight or something. That's what I do. So I've got that part done, and now I'm gonna take my bowl, and I'm gonna do the same thing. And this is just, you don't have to do this. This is just a preventative measure for me more than anything just so I hopefully won't have to go back and replace these bowl gaskets in the next year or two. All right, so I got all that code that's been set for a little bit. And I got this stuff, I think I picked it up at O'Reilly Auto Parts or somewhere. But if you don't have that, and you do a lot of mechanical work, you need it. It's, it works great. So I'm just gonna go ahead, set my gasket on, and try to get all my holes lined up well. And then now, I'm gonna go ahead and put my bowl on. This is always kind of a pain. Because even when you put your bowl on, the gasket wants to slide. Even with that stuff, it's pretty tacky, but it still wants to slide a little bit. And so I got my four screws in. I'm gonna go ahead and just get them all started. So I'm not gonna snug any of them down. Just get them all started, get them all threaded that gasket in there. I don't know if it really matters, but something I've been trying to do on these. And I'm gonna snug these down pretty good. Because I want these things to hopefully not leak, but I don't want to get them so tight that it ruins the gasket. Because that is a possibility with these rubber gaskets out there Zoom. All right, we're good to go. So now I'm gonna take wherever it went, take my stop plug, my drain plug, clean it off real good. And the kit does come with a new stop plug gasket. Go ahead and put that on. Snug it down pretty good. And there we go. So the bottom's done. Now onto the top. So on the top here, I've been doing the same thing, but just on the outer edges with the aviation gasket maker. Just a little bitty bit. I don't want it to get inside there because then here's where all your fuel flows around to your jets and everything and into the bowl, I believe. So just a little coat right around. So on these gaskets, you gotta kind of pay attention to the way that the fuel flows. Or here's where your needle is. And you wanna make sure that you line it up right. And for these, I'm just taking on the back side of the gasket and just putting a little bit of this on there. 
kind of same deal just around the edges because right there is where that little hole right here is where fuel flows through so I don't want to get any even near there all right so I got that done and now very carefully put this on try to not get that gasket maker anywhere that it doesn't need to be and now go ahead and get this piece on it only can go one way this is tapered all right I got all these started and I'm gonna just start snugging them up kind of watching that gasket as well just corner to corner all right and now just got to put our needle valve back in this is technically the throttle needle I guess I don't know terminology not my strong suit so I'm gonna just bottom this out take it all the way in all right there we go that's bottomed so this is a quarter half one half two half three there we go all done all right well there is three cleaned out somewhat rebuilt carburetors and i guess that's technically rebuilt the only thing that we didn't really replace were the clips that hold springs on and the bushings for the throttle or the butterfly valve and you know it didn't take me but about i don't know two hours just mostly because i had never taken these apart before and the first one took me as long as the other two just trying to figure out what parts you know i could replace what needed to be done and i think i got them good i think they'll i'm gonna slap these on tomorrow i've still got a a lot more work to do on the boat before I can put the motor on, but I'm gonna try to get it on hopefully this week. And then you know, I've got to rig everything. So it's gonna be a while before I can crank it, unfortunately. So if you wanna see that, you're gonna to have to tune around, subscribe, and just watch the rest of the boat build. And the other gasket you will need is the gasket that actually mounts it to the block. So that's pretty much it, nice and simple. And it didn't take me too long. I talked to someone, I was gonna get somebody to do this years ago. And I talked to somebody and I think they said they wanted like $600 to do this. It took me like 20 minutes to take them off, two hours to do it, and you know, 20 minutes to put it back on. So hopefully everything will go good when I get this thing on, get the motor back on the boat, and that's about it. Well, that's going to be about it for this video. I hope you liked it and hope to help somebody out. I'm no expert, but nah, I think we got it done. So hope at least you can look at something and see you know, how it goes apart and go from there take it for yourself and do it how you want to so i hope you're liking these videos please subscribe and there's a lot more of the boat build to come i've been working on painting the motor today and i'm gonna put some clips of that at the end but appreciate everybody watching and we'll see you next time well we got the motor all painted up and she's looking pretty good i got a few spots i need to touch up and uh didn't take these decals off i didn't want to try to remove them and put them back on and they're kind of milky right now i uh wiped them with acetone so I'm gonna have to, I may take some white new or I don't know, some something and I'll freshen those up. But around the edges, I kind of messed up a little bit with the tape and oh well. But I gotta take a little, brush, little paint brush and fix that. But we got the carburetors on, got the new gaskets on and everything. And this thing is dirty already, my God. But we should be ready to roll. And I just gotta get this thing done put back on.